Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Hello, good evening, and welcome. And here we are, homing in on the day of love, so it seems. So I thought we'd better do something to a... Yes, exactly so. Exactly so. Yes, we're homing in on Valentine's Day. Not quite there, but almost there, uh, one way or another. So we are going to celebrate it with the best in modern and contemporary jazz, and perhaps some slightly older jazz as well here. I'm jumping in with myself, H. And me, Chris. Yes, welcome along to this loved-up romantic edition of Jumping In, as it's almost Valentine's Day. And yes, I know it's not until Wednesday, which is technically halfway between this show and the next, but... Booking the habits of a wife time, we've both decided to get in early before the only options to declare your undying love are petrol station limp flowers and chocks. So, H, what's been getting you in the mood this week other than the smell of fresh vinyl when coupled with Lynn's finest LP12 and the tidiest of diamonds? And what has dampened your ardour other than hanging the washing out? Ah, well, um, I thought I'd start with the beginning with Tom Bancroft. Boy... Meets boy, meets girl, meets girl. Some subliminal seduction with Ralph Peterson and, uh, well, yeah, we'll probably get uh, something lovely. Somebody will love me with Sonny Clark, I imagine. And from me, well, as the other half, the road, but not on this case to ruin, the slight hint of the other lover and to get us in the mood, other than lowering the lights, tripping over the cat and sending red wine flying over the crushed velour, there's a ban, a ban, get my teeth in, there's a barn fine to beat all others. In this case, Thad Jones and Mel Lewis Orchestra with Lover Man. Thank you. 
absolutely fabulous and the great ambiance there from the club Thad Jones and Mel Lewis Orchestra live at the Village Vanguard in 1966, but not released until some 50 years later with Lover Man. The recording was captured at the time by a 19-year-old amateur engineer called George Cablin, who just happens to be the co-founder of Resonance Records, a non-profit label dedicated to bringing previously unreleased gems to the wider jazz public, normally at the rate of about four a year, although they've done about half a dozen recently. George was in his sophomore year at Columbia University at the time and was the host on a college jazz show was asked if he'd like to record a new band, then called, rather imaginatively, The Jazz Band, at the Village Vanguard which, in case you haven't been, is a finely, tiny, uh, fairly tiny cellar club. So with just a two-track, six mics, and mixing live on the fly without having sound-checked the band, George asked the soloists would they move towards the mic when they were taking their breaks, and off they went, starting what became a 50-year-plus residency on Monday nights at the Vanguard. And now the essence of this band continues as the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra. They released their debut live recording as the Mel Jones, uh, Thad Jones, Mel Lewis, orchestra in 1967 a few months later but they were using george's tapes as demos to get the gig and now for the first time we can all revel in the remarkable sound and we heard a great solo there from joe farrell on sax yeah no quite too sure how they get the whole orchestra into the vanguard if you've been there you'll know what i mean it is tiny you would have thought there's room for about six audience members it sounded like there's more than that there uh, from large to small a trio in fact tom bancroft I hadn't heard from him for a long time trio red and uh, with our lovey theme which is all about love today this is where it all starts boy meets boy meets girl meets girl Thank you. 
Very nice, very nice. I've forgotten how nice that trio was. Boy meets boy meets girl meets girl. Typically quirky title for the track from uh, Trio Red. That's Tom Bancroft on drums, Tom Coley on piano, Per Zanussi on bass, made in Scotland in uh, 20. 11 and we were just debating that the Bancrofts are still knocking round, but it doesn't look like they've been leading any of their own bands for quite some time they had the cable label of course for some time but it was always a tricky jazz at the best of times but very nice there we are that's the way love starts in any case isn't it boy meets girl or boy meets boy or girl meets boy or girl meets girl or whatever the case may be yes yeah, so we were saying both the Bancrofts actually trio aab still worth digging those old recordings i listened to one a little while ago I listened to the whole album through thoroughly enjoyed it it was what was that one called by that oh it's called first oh yeah that fits in nicely to the theme as well first hello to last goodbye and that's the album <laughs> yes indeed next for me yeah the great london collective Nerija, which was mainly composed of, uh, of women from the african diaspora which was part if you remember of the central goal of gary crosby and his partner janine irons with tomorrow's warriors they supported the recording of the band's debut bloom and from that album here's partner girlfriend lover <laughs>
their debut full-length album Bloom back in 2019. That was Partner, Girlfriend, Lover from Norija, a great band. Just two releases to their the, from their name, the first one the self-titled EP and then Bloom, although mainly they were the kernel and a kind of a seed for the seed ensemble, excuse the pun, which also had a couple of great releases, a uh, mainly female band with two great leaders on alto player Cassie Kenoshi and tenor player Nubaya Garcia, both very strong on the scene too, with Sheila Morris Gray on trumpet, Rosie Turton on trombone, Shirley Tete on guitar, Lizzie Excel on the drums, and the token man in Rio Kai on the bass, and all of whom are great band leaders in their own right. Hello, this is Leanne Carroll. You're listening to Jumping In with Chris and H. Kane on Manx Radio. Yeah, dig it.
staying with our lovely theme. I'm still on the early doors of love, really. I haven't got past the first beginnings. We had boy meets girl meets boy meets girl meets girl, girl and all the rest of it. Uh, and now, can't we be friends? And that's how it all starts, I guess, isn't it? Sonny Clark, wonderful pianist, uh, played a lot with, uh, well, pianist even, gone all American, uh, played a lot, of course, with Miles and off his own back. Cool strutting, great album I've uh, really enjoyed. This is from his standards album, Sonny on Piano. Paul Chambers' bass, Jamie Marritt on uh, bass as well on some tracks, um, but not. It was actually Paul Chambers on that first one. I thought I recognised him. And the lesser-known drummer, you might have thought it was Art Blakey, not Max Roach. No, Wes Landers on the drums. There's a, a man you don't often hear in Blue Note Circles. No, very nice nonetheless. And uh, another great recording which sort of dipped out of the limelight due to mainly the success of its predecessor under Milkwood. Yes, Stan Tracy and his 1967 quartet with Love From Jazz and I'm not sure whether things are going better or worse. Here's Lover's Freeway. <laughs> Thank you. 
the unmistakable sound of Stan Tracy. And if that doesn't make you feel like giving somebody a cuddle, I don't know what was. Love's Highway from their 1967 album with Love from Jazz. The last uh, made in that quartet lineup with Bobby Wellens as the feature soloist, although, of course, they went on to work together in other settings. Drummer Jackie Dugan, also from the Under Milkwood sessions, and the young up-and-coming bassist, guess who? Young up and coming bassist on that one is it was it Roy Babington or someone? Or Dave what? Green. Dave Green was it? Dave mm. Green, still one of the finest bassists in the country, and a thoroughly nice fella to boot. We had a quick chat with him at the recent London Jazz Festival. The original release was on Columbia and then deleted, but thanks to Clark, Stan's son, the album is available now, paired with the big brass album "We Love You Madly" on re-steamed record, and is a must for any Stan collectors. Classic stuff. Can't go wrong with a bit of Stan. It is jumping in. We are celebrating slightly early. The Day of Love, the, uh, yes, 14th Valentine's and all that. So it's a love-themed selection this evening. Um, I've been, yes, meeting and then early meetings and boy meet skill or whatever. And now I'm uh, turning to possibly my most effective uh, way of uh, any chance of chatting up someone of the opposite sex. Subliminal, sur- I can't say it, subliminal seduction. Yeah, we got there in the end. <laughs>
Hi everybody, I'm Nick Berch, composer, pianist, producer from Zurich, Switzerland. Looking very much forward to be on your radio for jumping in on Manx Radio. And you might hear some of my music. Thanks a lot, Howard and Chris. This comes directly from the Zen Funk main station.
Lovely one. I haven't heard that for quite some time. The Mache Abara Quartet. Before that, we had uh, Subliminal Seduction with the great Ralph Peterson, sadly no longer with us, Ralph on drums. Jeremy Pelt, trumpet, Jimmy Green, tenor, Oren Evans, piano, and uh, Eric Reavis, bass. Yeah, I really used to love the uh, various outfits that Ralph Peterson used to lead. Hit the drums so hard, he'd often fall off his stool. I remember sitting close to him one time, and he literally fell off his stool. He was swinging so hard. Wonderful. Great character, though, and a great teacher, and sadly left us a few years ago. And then uh, what normally happens after sub- subliminal seduction, or any seduction by me, well, yeah, that's where I came to Machu Ibarra. Unloved. That's where you end up. I hope you're not unloved this Valentine's Day. Well, um, I hope not, and I hope that you're all feeling relatively loved up now and in the mood to continue so that you can on the podcast of Jumping In, available on all the popular podcast platforms. But for now, young lovers, wherever you are and whoever you are, and indeed, however old you are, we'll leave you with an Anglo-American supergroup from a few years back who we had the chance to see them live a few times. Terrific live. There were three albums to their name. The Impossible Gentleman, made up of Gwilym Simcock on piano, Mike Walker on guitar, Steve Swallow on electric bass, Adam Nausbaum on the drums, with additional acoustic bass on this one from Steve Rodby, who, uh, ex-Pat Matheny, also produced the album. From internationally uh, recognised Aliens, their second release, here's, and I'm not sure how I feel about this, The Sliver of Other Lovers. See you next week. (laughs) Enjoy that love. Bye for now. (laughs) 